Welcome back to At Home with Roby. I'm Patrick McIsaac from Roby Electric, along with Trent Haston from the Roby family of companies. We are joined by Councilman Kenny Smith from District 6, and we're talking about South Park. And Kenny, tell how important is South Park Mall, and where do you see the future for the mall um, in that so, in that area? So, uh, the, the mall is the largest uh, uh, individual landowner in, in the South Park area. Um, they're, I think, about 2 million square feet. Uh, give, give or take. Um, so they're an incredibly important uh, part of our community. South Park has anchored the city for much of its 50 years in existence. And, and that we are working now and we're making decisions now that hopefully will set us up for another 50 years of quality growth um, and, and amenities added to our community, tax base, again, places to live, work, uh, eat, so forth, that will help set up the city in, in this area for another another 50 years. I mean, you spoke about it earlier and then during the break we were talking. You said that you need to get Simon Group to play in play yeah, in what's happening yeah, around yeah, their real estate. Yeah, we're, we're working with uh, Simon's right now. Um, the, there is a one of the ULI recommendations was to create a shared vision for, for, for the South Park area and speak with one voice. And so we've got, we're parallel tracking two things that I think will help the South Park area. First is we're working on a, a, in a group that will be much like Center City Partners or University City Partners that will be comprised of the landowners. And this is where it's critical. It's not just the development community. It's Nucor, Coke Consolidated, National Gypsums, folks that have a vested interest in the South Park area and where it heads create a board so we can have an advocate for this area. In the last uh, District 6, in the last um, CIP, Community Investment Package or Program, we got $8 million out of an $800 million package. That was for one road stub, which will be critical for helping get people around internally in South Park, but it's not a lot. of It's not a lot. And so we need advocates to help the South Park area continue to grow. And then secondarily, the neighbors around South Park are working to align themselves as well so that they can have a group that can help uh, advocate for in a lot of its access to these amenities. And we've sort of danced around this with the traffic. You get about 75,000 cars a day through Sharon and Fairview. Point of reference, the town of Asheville is 83,000 people. Wow. So that's like the town of Asheville driving through there. And, and we, we need to figure out how we can get people through the South Park area and how the people that are in closest proximity can partake in a lot of these amenities that are coming. Well, one of those changes you had mentioned, is that Rexford where we're going to ex- yep. ex- expand that? It's yep. going to allow some, some access and yep. people to kind of bypass yep. this, the area? This is going to be... Uh, this is going to help uh, South Park area out tremendously. So with the Colony Apartments rezoning that was approved last year, Rexford is now going to extend all the way to Sharon. So this will give another avenue to help get people through through South Park. As I touched on earlier, Sharon and Fairview, we cannot expand any of the roads. Right. So the only way we're going to get new roads through South Park is through the redevelopment. So it's a double-edged sword. But with each redevelopment, <laughs> we are able to create new connection points that will help people bypass the choke points that exist today from the from the lack of road network and the addition of uh, of cars on the road. So, so how far ahead are y'all looking? I mean, you you and do you do a a five, ten, twenty, fifty, or mm-hmm. I mean, what is? I would say that it's it, it's it's sort of a mixed bag. The existing area plan for South Park was instituted in uh, two thousand. So I mean, I it's sixteen it's sixteen yeah. years old takes about three years to, to, to study to do the area plan. So the information on that was, uh, I mean, we're pushing almost 20 years um, off of one plan, and South Park has changed within the past five years, let alone the past 15. Um, I think the city planners now are looking, uh, we're looking more into the future. CDOT is looking into the future. Um, we're going to have a connection road eventually that will connect Park South to Sharon, and so this will be able to take people that or going south, not necessarily east on Fairview, and bypass, again, one of the busier intersections in the city. And that is a, it, originally we thought it might be a 30-year outlook, but at the pace that South Park's redeveloping, it could be a 15, 12-year. 
Well, folks, you're listening to At Home with Roby. We're, we're still here with Councilman Kenny Smith talking about South Park and, and the future of South Park. And, Kenny, that's what really Urban Land Institute, I mean, that, I think that's great that you guys reached out to a third party, and, and they produced a lot of results. I mean, this wasn't a small deal. I mean, they brought 10 or so people in town. It, it, it was a huge deal, and uh, a lot of thanks go to uh, City Manager Ron Kimball, admin sort of banging my fist on the dais for a new area plan. <laughs> we are rewriting the entire zoning ordinance, which takes up a lot of resources. We were not going to have the opportunity for a small area plan. And Ron Kimball, who was the city's representative on ULI, reached out and said, hey, I got a great idea. Um, and we brought in 10 experts from all around the country. They were with different uh, facets of the uh, real estate community, transportation, architects, developers, so on and so forth, people from Oakland, the greater D.C. area, Atlanta, New York. They came in and they met with 75 citizens. Uh, you had developers, land use attorneys, neighbors, uh, elected officials, so fr- folks on the county commission were there as well. They came in and spent f- uh, two intense days of interviews. What do we want from South Park? Like, what, are your, what do you want out of it? And then they came back and gave us some recommendations. We'll get the follow-up on this, a more in-depth uh, response here hopefully in the next week to two weeks on how how you take what the the, fo- the stakeholders what they want and what the experts think is achievable yeah i mean you said i want to i want to emphasize this C- connecting people in places and and uh not be car centric designed for people moving around yeah. and and think about that well, i mean think about it if if you live i live in Berkeley down so again i'm right no, you're i'm right, right i'm right there sure um and we rarely walk up to South Park. It's not a very inviting walk as it right. stands today. You have four-foot sidewalks, curb gutter, and you get about 11,000 cars a day on Barkwood Downs. So if I'm with my small kids, that doesn't seem like a lot of fun. Well, imagine if Barkwood Downs, if we're able to take some public sector investment, create a sidewalk system where you have a traditional, maybe a planting strip and a little bit wider sidewalk, it suddenly becomes a lot more inviting to take your kids and walk up to the Village Tavern or somewhere. And the kids can ride their bike and they have plenty of room. You're not worried about them getting out in the street. Yeah. So if you live on Barkley Downs, please call our office. We would like to put a sign in your front yard, (laughs) 11,000 cars. That's unbelievable. Um, Kenny, people sometimes compare South Park to Buckhead. I grew up in Marietta, Georgia. Obviously, Buckhead has had had some growth as well. What have we learned from them? You know, it's a couple things. One is I don't know what the coordinated growth in, in, in Buckhead was. I don't know how many of the stakeholders came together. And, again, your stakeholders would be your elected officials, your neighbors, and your development community. Um, if they came together early enough in the process to figure out a shared a shared vision, and we go back to the shared vision, and that's something the development community, to be quite honest, when I was asking for a small area plan, at first was a little nervous and I kept trying to explain to them guys we want to bring in all the stakeholders as soon as possible and figure out where we want to go together to limit the isolated battles with each rezoning so the neighbors are actually your best asset to figure out what they want and how we can best integrate everybody together and I don't know if when Buckhead if they did that I don't know um, so that that's I would say we may be earlier than Buckhead. That's great news. A little more proactive. A little more proactive, and part of this you learn from Buckhead. And hey, becoming Buckhead may be great, right? I I don't know. Right. And so the answer is collectively, what do we want for the South Park area? It may maybe to be Buckhead. It may be to be something slightly different. But the key is to have all the stakeholders at the table hammering it out and working it working on a common goal. Well, we want to be Charlotte. We don't want to be Buckhead. We want to be South Park. We don't want to be it, Atlanta. I got them backwards, but uh, yeah. well, but I do like that area when I go down there. Sure. Well, it's interesting that you say that. So the ULI folks said there's no identity for South Park. I mean, you recognize it. I mean, everybody knows the name South Park. When I was a kid, if you said you lived by South Park, it literally meant you lived by, by South by Park. Off, yeah. Yeah. Na- now it means something different as you look, look at the growth. But we do need we need to create a true identity. For South Park, is it the office space? Is it the mall? I mean, are people referring to the mall? Are they referring to, you know, some of the ancillary development? What are you referring to when you just throw out the name South Park? When you throw out Buckhead, I think you do have a – I haven't spent a lot of time there, but I think you have some idea of what Buckhead is, and that's one thing we're working on for South Park. 
I think it's amazing to see that these businesses, corporations, want to pay quadruple rents to be in South Park versus five miles away because they see value in the in the living and the experience. So, well, Kenny, thank you so much for your service, for your leadership, and your partnership. Uh, shared voice. Say that again. Shared. One shared voice and shared vision and, shared and unified, vision, unified voice. Unified voice. That yeah. sounds How can fantastic. people get a hold of you, Kenny? Uh, you can krsmith at charlottenc.gov. Thanks for being here. We'll be back 